Welcome to Onward Live, a live stream focused on encouraging you to create a life you love living now. Let's go beyond success to significance. Being clear on our why is crucial. It requires doing the inner work, finding ourselves, getting to know ourselves, embracing our inner child, shedding social conditioning, and letting go of perfect. We know obstacles make us stronger. We can dream big and take action. Believe you can, and you're halfway there. I invite you to tune in every week and engage with me and my inspiring guests. Invite your friends. Let's make time for what matters most in our lives. Let's move onward together. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining. For those who are here, let's see, I've, I see some people in the chat. A Facebook user said, hey, hey, Emily Harmon. I'm, I'm guessing that's Russ. A lot of times, a lot of times that's what uh, Russ says. So hi, Christine. Yeah, you're an aging enthusiast. OK, awesome. I'm glad that you're here. So if you haven't met me before, my name is Emily Harmon. I'm the host of this Onward Live show. And uh, the reason I want to help everybody create a life that they love living is because I all of a sudden woke up one day and I'm like, well, what happened is my former husband, Mike Children's father, passed away. And I realized he was not living a life that he loved living at the time. He was waiting for retirement to happen or this to happen or that to happen. And that's why I said, now, what can you do today? create a life that we love living. And I think part of that is as we're aging, (laughs) I used to think that a Lieutenant in the Navy was old they're about like 25 years old. Um, So now that I'm 58, I think that 58 is kind of young too. So as we're aging, how do we age zestfully? And my guest, Nicole Christina is going to be talking about that. There she is. We're going to be talking about zestful aging. Nicole Christina walks the walk. So let me bring Nicole Christina in. Let's see. There she is. Hi. Hey. Welcome. Thank yeah. you. I got this little uh, thing I'll put here too, where you can see both of our voice, our faces, and you can uh, see the title. So it's pretty cool. You've been a psychotherapist for over thirty years, and you specialize in eating disorders and food issues, and you have a zestful aging podcast too, where you Mm -hmm. help people reframe aging as a time of great opportunity and growth. I try. Yeah. I'm really excited to have you here. Um, So welcome. And thank you. you What does aging mean to you? And what does zestful aging mean to you? Well, that's a great question. I think zestful means different things to different people. For me, it means um, pushing myself out of my comfort zone. And let me give you a couple of examples of this. And I have friends that are teasing me about doing this. But next month, I'm going to the Everglades to uh, do a five-day kayak. Um, And that involves some, you know, dangerous animals. There are both crocodiles and alligators. Uh, It's the only place they exist together in nature. Um, And uh, it's not particularly dangerous, but I'm getting a lot of ribbing about keeping my limbs in the kayak. Um, I'm really excited about doing that, a little bit nervous, but that's kind of what makes it exciting. Um, And I'm going to be playing tennis in the National Senior Games um, this spring at Fort Lauderdale. And I am a competent player, but let me put it this way. I booked my flight before the final match because I will not be in that final match. If I win a game, I will be screaming from the hilltops. I'll be so excited. Uh, For me, it's really meeting so many of the people who participate in the National Senior Games and getting to uh, walk around Fort Lauderdale and try Cuban food and do some bird watching. So again, 
pushing myself out of my comfort zone because truth be told, I'm going alone. I'll be there for several days. And there will be times when I'm probably going to be a little lonely and disoriented and miss my family and my puppies and think I'd rather be home right now. But there's something about really, um, you know, sort of pushing myself to do things that I know in the end will help me live a life without regrets. Um, I just recently turned 60. And for me, it's just been, you know, I've been talking about this, thinking about it, researching a lot. But for me, it's like, there is no denying right now that there is more time behind me than in front of me. And time is ticking. So the idea of zestful aging to me is really living without regrets, doing things that are a bit of a challenge for me and hopefully contributing to the greater good and and leaving some kind of positive legacy. I I love that because, you know, that's what happened right after I retired and I found out um, my former husband was sick with cancer and he passed away five months later and he was 64. And you know, I've got his files here and they have like three files on retirement. He would always send me different things about saving for retirement and stuff like that. And he didn't really get to enjoy his savings in that way. And he didn't really take a lot of, a lot of trips. And, you know, I, I saw him um, when he was really sick, you know, spending a lot of time in his head thinking, and, you know, he, he wasn't one to share what he was thinking really, but I can just assume that he was thinking, I could have done this and I could have done that. And I could have, I wish I had gone out on my boat more. He was always somebody who was buying a boat, but then he hardly ever went out on it. Uh, so, you, yeah. You know, that's, I, I like many women have um, been through uh, cancer and, um, you know, in full recovery. That was 15 years ago. But I think when you have these wake up calls, like, you know what, this party is not going to last forever. There's ways that, you know, you really have to answer the call in my mind. I just don't want to be on my deathbed saying, you know, I should have taken that tennis lesson. I should have gone on that trip. Um, But it can be even like today, I live in upstate New York, and we just got a pretty good snowfall. And uh, it's been chilly. But, you know, there's something about walking in deep snow that's Mm -hmm. great exercise. I brought face covering because we all have all of these, you know, outfits (laughs) for the weather. And I went out with my dog and um, it felt like I, I, I wouldn't say it was, you know, a big challenge, but it sure would have been easier to stay home in my toasty house Right. Uh, knitting or 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 watching, you know, uh, in the middle of doing a training for my therapy practice or, you know, there's a lot of stuff I could have done. But I think that there's something about sort of saying, yes, I'm going to do that, even though it might be a little chilly. And, you know, I don't think we regret much saying yes. It's really the no, I don't think so. That gets us into trouble. Yeah, I think you're right. And it's like, to me, creating a life you love living doesn't, to, for me, and it's different for everybody, but it doesn't mean I'm going on this trip and then that trip and then this trip and then that trip. It Part of it is just what you said. I'm going to enjoy the snow today. Yes, I, that's exactly right. Because like, you know, I want to, not everyone can afford to fly to Florida and go with the guy, you know, I mean, I did it on my credit card card points but that's a you know i don't want to make it be like you have to go to paris and then when you're done there you got to go you know that's not really what it's about i think it's really more saying yes to life and even if it's um a little bit out of your comfort zone Uh, here's just a silly example Uh, i have a friend and we uh sometimes go to a knitting group together and we, we have a lot of fun she's another psychotherapist and she saw a class in her library that I think it was like five dollars and it was doing this particular craft i don't know if you've heard of it it's a really i guess it's an ancient craft but you take wool and you take a pin and you st- yeah My and mom you- started it <laughs> okay and so you can make these beautiful animals i mean they are exquisite and i was just like doing this thing and i said you know 
this isn't for me. This is just <laughs> too repetitive. I'm going to get like carpal tunnel syndrome here. Yeah. This is just like too repetitive. I love the beauty of what people create, but this isn't for me. Okay. So big deal. It was an hour or two hours, five bucks. I tried it. And now I know I'm not a felter, yeah. you know? <laughs> My mom had to pick up something else because she's doing pottery. She bought a, um, she's making pottery. She bought a kiln and all that. But all of a sudden wow. she was having trouble getting clay. And the clay's not here and it's on the truck and it's not being delivered. And it was just got, it got lost or something. So she had to pick up another hobby. So yeah, that's what she did. It, but, they can, they make the most beautiful things. It's yeah. just, for me, it's, I guess it's just not, it doesn't click for me, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Let's um let's just see here who's here visiting with us tonight or watching the show. So you got, got a lot of comments. Yeah. So um Christine Smith, she's the aging enthusiast. And Tim Sowen is here on Facebook. He's the one that said, Hey, hey, I thought it was uh somebody else. And um let's see, we have the senior games are back yeah. on. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, I've got someone say so. Tim said, "Thank you, uh, Leah, from calling in from or, or tuning in from Costa Rica. Appreciate you. I guess you didn't get to walk in the snow today. No. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was nice to talk with where you, you earlier put, today. I'm sorry. Where do you put your sights on that comp? What? Huh? What is that? Oh, Charlotte. Snow. Oh, you're. I'm putting them right here. You don't have to pay attention to the chat oh. there. I'm putting them at the bottom oh. of the screen. Oh, so okay. Yeah. So I'll pull them up and then you don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. So let's see. We've got the senior games are back on Christine Smith. Where are they being held? They're being held in Fort Lauderdale, but here's a little story and it's sort of a zestful aging kind of fail in a way. Two years ago, they were held in Albuquerque and um, I went out and what I didn't know, maybe some of you know, is that Albuquerque is at a very high altitude. Uh -huh. And altitude affects tennis balls. And what that means for players is that when the ball comes, it's the air is thinner, it's moving a lot faster. Uh -oh. So essentially, <laughs> I missed every single ball. I mean, I was ready to go. I was doing my thing and the ball was already far behind me. So I just, it was so humbling. Um, I might have cried a little bit but I couldn't hit anything. And they have special balls just for the altitude, which I didn't know. So hopefully I'll do better um, in, uh, you know, on the East Coast. Uh, but that was, that was tough. Although I will say it was, um, I had been out there before, but um, we took some gorgeous hikes and met some really interesting people, ate some great food. And I never, you know, I wouldn't have said, hey, let's go vacation in Albuquerque. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it was really, really fun, even though the tennis was abysmal. <laughs> Um, so uh, Christine says, is kayaking with crocs and alligators one of your life goals, Tim? I don't know. It, <laughs> it will, yeah, I mean, it, I, I've been thinking about it for a while. We kayak a lot. I live in upstate New York, and so there are a lot, there's a lot of water around here. The great, uh, well, obviously, Finger Lakes and Lake Ontario. So we love to kayak. Um, and I just had that idea because we love animals and wildlife and stuff. So I thought, wouldn't that be fun? And then I uh, got busy looking at my um, credit card points and I thought, wow, we could pretty much pay for this whole trip. And um, so uh, that's, that's what we're going to do. That's awesome. And um, D Baker says, we all can all hope we live without regret. I, Amen I on that. Amen Dude. on that. Yep. Yeah. And then um, Christine says, Nicole and her tennis competition at the senior games makes me want to go to Fort Lauderdale and do the all comers walk at least. Oh, <laughs> please do. I mean, the thing when I went, um, there were eight centenarians there. So these folks are 100 years old doing their stuff. And there was such a camaraderie. Some of these folks have been, you know, pretty serious athletes in college or, you know, after college. So you see like people know what they're doing, but there was so much joy and there's such a community of, you know, 
you have to be over 50. So, you know, there's just a, a real, I mean, uh, it's a very unusual kind of community and there's just a lot of goodwill and there's a lot of support and you just meet fantastic people. I met two tennis players at the uh, airport in Chicago last time and, you know, we stayed in touch. We just, I saw the rackets and it was just like, hey, are you going? Yeah, you know, and we shared a car and it just like, again, you know, I'm an extrovert, but it's still I, you know, they're strangers and yeah. it's a little bit nerve wracking. So um, yeah, got to push yourself. Otherwise, you're going to just be sitting home watching repeats. Yeah. So Sonja says age is a mindset. And that's true. And then we've got D. Scott Smith uh, tuning in from Oregon. And let's see. Oh, um, Christine says, when did you put your sights on that competition? Like, how long have you been planning to do this competition um, with tennis? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, you have to qualify in your state. So I've been doing this for, I guess, about five years. And it's really all about the travel because I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, fake humble here. I, I mean, I'm, I'm a competent player, but these people are really fantastic. If I can win a game, I'll be really happy. So it was more about the experience. I think five or six years ago, I became aware that it was a thing, actually a thing, and I thought I'd like to, I'd like to do that and pretend that like um kind of a fakey, uh, you know, professional yeah. tennis player because <laughs> I love the game so much and. So I guess it's about five years ago, I, I was aware it was a thing and I um, was able to qualify um, a, a couple times. And awesome. uh, yeah, so, uh, but the, you know, the real, because of COVID, when I went down to qualify, not a lot of people showed up. So it wasn't that I was a superstar, it was that um, I, sh you know, I showed up and I played okay and I got in. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'd love for uh, the people watching to put in the comments, what does zestful aging mean to you? And I also want to say that, you know, so when I first retired um, a few in 2019, it was a few months after that, that my um, former husband got, well, a week, month later, he got sick and then he passed away. So my, my initial time was taken up with that. Then COVID hit. And so I spent a lot of time at home and I'm an introvert actually. And so being at home, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I also want to get out. So this, you know, this year I thought, well, what would I really love? So I do have a trip coming up in February where I'm going to go snowshoeing, hike, um, hiking and cross country skiing in West Virginia. Oh, lovely. So that's coming up. So I'm looking forward to that. It's like a, a company that plans these all women trips. So I don't even know. I'm going by myself. I don't even know who else is going. So I'm that's great. Go. Good for you. Yeah. I my hats off to you. And then I'm also going to, um, well, so a couple of years ago, I was going to go hike Machu Picchu and then the trip got delayed for COVID. Uh -huh. And now it's happening in April. But now I have that plane ticket, which I spent a thousand dollars. So it expires by March 31st. I've got to travel by March 31st. Mm. So I decided I'm going to go to Seattle, visit my roommate from the Naval Academy for a week. And then on the way back, I'm going to go visit my daughter. So that trip's coming up. Oh. And, and um, so hiking Machu Picchu. And then I've got a few camping trips coming up. But actually, to be honest, all those trips make me a little anxious because I got to leave mm. my dog. I'm used to being at home home and I like being at home a little bit anxious because what's leaving my comfort zone I want to do them I get it that's what you're talking about <laughs> is leave your comfort zone right and and yeah when I look back am I going to wish I had gone on some of these trips yeah I will I so. think you're you know you're what you're saying is is something I talk a lot about as a therapist and I guess also with the aging is that it's always bittersweet. You know, I'd rather be in my own bed. I have really cozy comforter. I've got two dogs that cozy up with me and like 
no hotel's going to be that cozy. Mm -hmm. So like there are moments when you're like, look, I just want some homemade food. Don't give me all of the shoe shoes and the, you know, just give me a nice plate of pasta or something. And, you know, there are moments I know that I'll feel homesick. I'm actually going to the games by myself um, because we will have already gone down to um, uh, home, uh, down to South Florida. And we just didn't want to replicate that. But absolutely sure, I'm going to have loneliness and I'll feel like, oh, I'm all alone eating, you know. But that's kind of part of part of it. And I know I'll really even appreciate more when I get home and, you know, everyone's there to uh, greet me and I can make food in my own kitchen. That's a good way to thinking about it. So it is normal that I'm kind of feeling that way a little. Sure. You know, I do love being at home and it make me appreciate being at home more. And it's also getting me out of my comfort zone. It's just all, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, everything is mixed. I mean, in my in my mind, even the best things can have a tinge of sadness or loneliness or loss. And even the worst possible things always can have a little bit of a, a, a positive um, element. And that's like ambivalence, you know, that's kind of the state of being human. So I fully expect when I go out there and I see a really cool bird, it's not as fun to, to see it by yourself, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. and there'll be that. It, absolutely. And there'll be times when I feel like everyone's in a group except me, you know, I, I fully expect to have those feelings, but I also am, you know, it, I have a value in pushing myself and trying to be courageous, even if I'm not feeling that courageous and no one knows so that's awesome that's awesome so you host a podcast it's called the zestful aging podcast four and years we're almost four years old in february will be four so kind of give a, an idea of some of the kinds of topics that you cover and, and maybe your favorite mm. episodes or something like oh that. well i can tell you about an episode i did today which was pretty remarkable i don't know if people have watched the uh um academy award winning documentary free solo it's mm -hmm. about a young man who i still can't even believe he did this he climbed up el capitan without ropes so wow. uh he is the only one who would do this it's spectacular and like incredibly dangerous. There's nothing there to catch him. He's just going up what is basically a sheer cliff. So um, his mom started getting kind of interested in what all the fuss was about. And at 70, she was the oldest woman ever to climb El Capitan. And she had a birthday party on the top. It was dark, but I guess it was the next day. I can't quite remember. They had little bottles of champagne and chocolate. And I um, spoke with her today. I haven't, um, it's not an, the podcast isn't up yet. Right. But I try to talk to P. I'm a clinical social worker. So a lot of my stuff has to do with contributing to the greater good, either by doing some kind of volunteer work or projects. I do a lot of social justice kind of stuff. Some of it is a little hard to hear. Some of it, yeah, I did a thing on human trafficking. I did a thing on opioid crisis. Mm -hmm. um, I did a thing about estrangement, um, parent and child estrangement. Um, but I also do things that like, you know, climbing up um, El, El Cap, as they call it, El Capitan. So my guests are culture changers. They're from all over the world. Um, we're actually heard in 101 countries, which I still can't believe. And they're mostly people who are working for some kind of justice or doing something kind of off the beaten path. One woman that comes to mind, I interviewed two years ago, is uh, she's an actress. Her name is Sandra Fish, and she was in the Netflix, um, uh, it was a series called Sense8. And so she hangs around with some pretty big movie stars, but what she loves to do is go to San Quentin, 
and teach the uh, inmates hospice skills because many of our inmates, the prison population is also aging and um, yeah. they're dying, right? And so her contribution is to teach people hospice skills and this is how she spends her free time. And she says that it's so deeply meaningful and rewarding that she just has no interest in going to like celebrity parties. <laughs> so that's such a great example of like, she would be like a great example of a, a wonderful um, guest. Yeah. So Kara says, I'm, I'm not yet 40, but my dad's side of the family live into their nineties. For me, zestful aging is owning your potential in your mm. spirituality, community, self-expression and physical self. And that's something I've enjoyed unraveling little by little. And I don't know if I can get the whole thing in there. But. Well said, I love yeah. that. Unraveling your potential. Yeah. That's so beautiful. And then Barbara Stankowski says, start, she started riding and jumping lessons at age 72. Wow, riding her horse. She loves the horses and riding and she'll do the first horse show this year, something she's always wanted to do. So you're doing it. Good job, Barbara. And awesome. if you want to uh, contact me, I'd love to talk to you about being on my show. That's just the kind of thing I love. I'm a big animal fan, if you haven't noticed that already. And I was able to interview the woman who fostered my dog in Texas. And she's in her 70s. She does all the Zumba stuff. And uh, she fosters for one of our major rescue uh, centers in upstate New York. And I had the, the delightful opportunity to interview her about why she wants to foster dogs. Love it. I mean, yeah. So uh, Barbara says it's never too late to pursue a dream or passion, for sure. Hi, yeah. Russ. Russ Hedge is here. And uh, let's see, there's Russ. And then Kara says to Barbara, your first horse show. Congratulations. I know. Yeah, That's Kara's so cool. my baby still. But you're, you are aging, Kara. I mean, you're almost 40. We're, we're all aging, right? Even my son, who's 28, is aging. He's getting older. So whatever. So, yeah. Oh, and Barbara also volunteers at a local animal shelter. Huh. My daughter used to do that. And uh, it was challenging for me because she'd always want to bring home a certain dog or cat or whatever. I bet so. <laughs> Let's just go look, Mom. Oh, I can't go look. You I can't know. look. I mean, there's no, I for me, it's like, there's no looking. There's only getting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your, your role as a psychotherapist, do you cover topics like zestful aging or is it the, the eating disorders and stuff like that? Or is well, it it's actually crisscrossed in an interesting way. Um, I live right next to Syracuse University. My office is a mile from Syracuse University. So I see a lot of students and faculty with eating issues, eating disorders, um, all different kinds of food stuff, bariatric, post-bariatric surgery. And what's happened is, you know, I'm aging and my clients are aging and they've started asking, you know, what am I doing now? My kids are gone. I'm about ready to retire or I'm thinking about retiring. I may or may not be partnering because now there's like this gray divorce, right? right? And I, you know, it's that what now question. So what's happened is in my psychotherapy practice, people are asking those same kind of questions like, who am I? What, like, I thought I was like a mom and like right. a teacher or whatever. <laughs> now I'm just this person who has to come to terms with an aging body. Um, maybe I'm taking care of my parents. Maybe I'm taking care, you know, all these questions that we're very familiar with. So I started realizing that there was a big overlap. And that's one of the things that inspired me to start the podcast is that I knew there were a lot of women out there. My, my show caters to women. I knew there were a lot of women out there who were asking the same questions like, I don't even know where to start. I don't even yeah. know what I like. And so what I've, I've done a lot of reading and, and, and um, looking a lot of data and, 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 and really trying to 
understand what all the issues are. And sometimes we have to say, what did you used to like as a kid? That's where we start. And they might say, I used to love to draw. And then we take it from there. What did you draw? What did you love to draw? How about just putting a little bit of a blank drawing pad in your purse now and take it out while you're, you know, that kind of thing. But it really is um, remarkable how these successful, bright women are really stumped at what do I do with this next phase of life? I got no idea. That I agree. I, I run into that a lot too. That's the, that's my target audience too, or t client as a coach. And because that was me, I 56, I'm retiring. Yes. I'm free to do what I want. What do I want? <laughs> right. <laughs> want? It's like who, 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 you know, you were busy doing your big job, taking care of your kids. No one has the luxury of saying, I just, you know, I was thinking maybe I would try to do this kind of sport or this kind of activity. Or no one has time for that. Yeah, you don't. And then when you think, well, for me, you know, I want, I want a podcast. Oh, I can't do that. I, you know, so, so our minds can hold us back. We can think of things that we maybe once we start thinking of things we love to do, we'll be like, well, maybe no, I can't draw because I'm not a good drawer. Right. Whatever. You know, what are well, what I found and it's back to the conversation we had a few minutes mm -hmm. ago is, but that's scary. I'm like, it's, yes, it is. <laughs> and, you know, like you, what about a meetup? We have different, you know, all, all towns do. And there's some really cool ones here. And I said, well, what do you think about this? Well, I won't know anybody. Right. You know? that's, that's <laughs> so, yeah. So here's so let's see. Christine says, Zestful Aging, kindly catch myself thinking I could have done that. Mm. I used to be able, I can, I just do what I can. I surprise myself, celebrate other top demographic people who get their adventure on too. Yeah. Cause, and I like that kindly catch myself thinking instead of beating yourself up, Christine. And watch, watch what you're believing. Our society, you know, that's no secret is saying, you know, once you get your first wrinkle, yeah, you're yeah. done you know you have a shelf life right <laughs> yeah. um and um so really watch what you know and we're we're marinating in all of this like you better get that wrinkle cream otherwise no one's gonna want to be next to you and so we really have to um i think be very good consumers and think well, what's there what's your agenda here you know yeah. is this good for me or is this good for you yeah from yeah that's right scott d scott says he celebrated his 30th anniversary of his 30th birthday you know i sent a video for that uh d scott but it, i guess it didn't get sent it didn't go through and so anyway i want you to know i did record you a video <laughs> kara says i'm actually loving the white hairs oh yeah me too I wish my hair was grayer. It's not even, it's not, you know, I would, I wouldn't mind having more gray. I don't have time. Nor, to nor would me. I. No, yeah. yeah. That's another thing. You know, I used to dye my hair and now I'm like, first of all, it's not good for you. Those dyes are really strong. It's expensive. And mm -hmm. like, you have to sit there. I'm like, I've got so much more interesting <laughs> stuff to do. Yeah. A lot of people grew their hair out during COVID, which is kind of cool. I know my roommate from college did. Her hair was down to here and, you know, it started to be gray, gray, and then half gray. And now she's got it. It's all, all mm -hmm. gray. It looks awesome on her. It's just oh, like yeah. There's something really beautiful about people, women who are not trying to fight their age. They're just like, this is what I am. And it, it works for me. I think there's something really sad when people are so trying to pretend that they're not the age they are. It just doesn't, it doesn't work. No, it doesn't. It does not. So, um, yeah. Oh, Ingor. Inger's here. Hi, Inger. Oh, wait, that was somebody that I didn't, I missed your comment. Inger says, I love gray, Emily. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do too. 
And Kara says, my favorite ladies who zestfully age are the ones who are told they can't do something because of their age and not their ability. And they say, hold my wine. <laughs> I you love know, there that. Is, there is an older woman who is an influencer on Instagram. I don't remember her name, but have you heard her or seen her? She like dresses to the tilt. Oh, the yes. There's a... It's um something aging. But, uh, there's a few of them. Yeah. I don't I don't go on Instagram because I'm already, you know, trying to control my scrolling. Yeah. Um I find yeah, that, that you know, I can yeah. I can just go down that Facebook thing and oh my goodness. I do get some guests from social media, but I yeah, the Instagram is one that I've been able to avoid so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So oh, you also wrote a book, which I'm just going to admit to the audience right now that your book makes me a little nervous because her book is not just chatting. It's how to become a podcast, a master podcast interviewer. So I'm interviewing somebody who's been a podcast host for a long time and she knows all the tips about how to be a master podcast interviewer. Well, I don't know, you know, if there's so much tips, I think that you already do um, some of the stuff intuitively. I, I took it from my years of interviewing clients and, you know, uh, just trying to, well, and I also did some research, but the idea is to listen, obviously, and uh, sort of draw people out. What I found to be very interesting is I would watch interviewers like Letterman, even Oprah, um, different people, and they would like change the subjects really fast. And I'm like, this person looks like they're about ready to cry. It's <laughs> obviously really important to them. Why are you changing the subject? <laughs> so, um, you know, there are things like that that I've learned from being a therapist and just trying to study what makes a good interview. Um, and uh, it's a very short book, actually, but I thought it would be fun to put it out there. And what's been nice is I've been able to um, go to different conferences and it's just sort of a nice uh, lead in and people, you know, will invite you to talk. And so that that kind of helps the podcast get out in the world a little bit. Do you have it on Amazon? It is. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. here you go. D. Scott Smith is saying, let's go live on Amazon and promote your book. He introduced okay. people on Amazon Live. So you oh, guys I, connect. I did and not that. even know there was such a thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's called Not Just Chatting, How to Become a Master Podcast Interviewer. And, um, you know, I, I, when I was starting to do podcasting, I would listen to interviews and I'd be like, you're talking a lot and not really listening to your guest and yes. you know and I, a lot of them were younger and the other thing is like there may not be any focus right you're, it's just you're sort of shooting the breeze which i guess is interesting to some people not that interesting you know to me but like you have to have a reason and right. some kind of theme it's not just right. like, you know, you're having a coffee and just talking about anything and everything. So those are some of the things that I, I noticed. Um, also, yeah. only have people on that you're interested in, and then you don't have to fake it, right? I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of people who would love to be interviewed. Don't interview someone who you're not that interested in. Yeah. So, you know, one of the things, you're, you're right. I guess I shouldn't have you on the show. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing you. <laughs> but um, one of the things that I do is when people sign up to be on my podcast, I ask, you know, what are what are the main points you want to convey? So one of your main points was how to be a zestful ager. But the other one was why it's important to think about your legacy. Right. The thing about legacy is it goes back to some of the science and the research on aging. And that is people who feel as though they're leaving something for the next generation. So they're doing something that will never be enjoyed by them. Here's a little example, planting trees, right? I can go plant a hundred trees in Syracuse. I'm never going to enjoy a full size tree. 
um, because I won't be here to enjoy that. But when people leave behind a legacy, they feel better about aging and it helps them feel vital. It helps them feel like their life has meant something. And so there's a deep satisfaction. It's not the kind of like, yippee, you know, crazy uh, stuff like when you first get your driver's license or like you, whatever, big, you know, go to the prom or whatever, you know, it's not a jumping up and down feeling. It's more of a like a peace with yourself, a, a deep, deep sense of satisfaction and content and like, you know what, my life has meant something. Maybe I didn't, you know, uh, cure COVID. Maybe I didn't uh, bring peace to the Middle East, but I did the things that I could. And what research shows us is that leaving a legacy, however small, really helps us age um, in, a, in a beautiful way. Wow. So... What do you want your, what is your legacy? What do you want oh, it to be? Uh, certainly my psychotherapy practice, you know, I've met with, I guess by now, thousands of people and really take that very seriously. Uh, it's a huge honor. It's a huge responsibility. Um, that would be, I think, a piece of the legacy. But the other legacy, I think, is my podcast where, I feel like I, I really want to share optimism about aging. Um, I want to bring some um, guests in, which I have, that talk about resilience and talk about mental health issues that, you know, that's near and dear to my heart as a psychotherapist. And, you know, it's so satisfying to see people like I saw a download and I thought, what the heck is GI? I have no idea. I had to look it up. It was the Guernsey Islands, which are some islands north of England. Maybe people are familiar. There's 60,000 people who live there. Three of them listen to successful aging. Oh, and I'm wow. like, who told you about my podcast? This is just bizarre. But like, there's something about knowing that people are listening and that I'm hoping to share information that makes people feel better and more optimistic and hopeful. So I think that's certainly part of my legacy. I, I get that. I mean, I, I too can go uh, on my podcast on Lisbon is where I, my, uh, where I stream it or whatever. And mm -hmm. I can see where people are watching from. And sometimes at the end of the show, in fact, if you're listening now, cause this will be published as a podcast, who are you? Where are you listening from? Yes. Talk to me. Go to my website, schedule a meeting. Tell me what you mes message me. Tell me what you like about the show. Because yeah. you know, people can leave a comment on Apple Podcasts, but they have all these nicknames, you know, their little <laughs> username. And you don't yeah, know who yeah. it is. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. So let's see. Um, oh, D. Scott is posting a blog that he wrote back in 20, uh, 2012 asking if I would uh, get involved in a long-term project where I would not receive benefit. Maybe not my children or even my grandchildren. I used the Cathedral of Notre Dame as the basis. So he wrote a blog. That'd be fun to go wow. back and look in the comments later and, and read about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, it's a legacy and it, it may not, we may not see it all come to fruition, but we definitely want people to remember us. And um, I can just tell my dad, you know, he's, oh, Saturday, he's turning 88. And my mom's 78. And I can tell my dad sometimes I can tell just from conversations with him that he's he's thinking about his legacy. But I'll tell you what, he's 88. He was 86. He started taking piano lessons. So, that's so that's... He, he's still going. My mom is 78. She walks about seven or eight miles a day. She lifts weights. She does P90X. She's crazy. <laughs> And, and, and she does pottery and, you know, my parents are definitely zestfully aging. They read, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're alive. Yeah. They don't have a TV. They don't sit and watch TV. They, they're out. My, you know what? My dad's biggest complaint, maybe you know how to fix this, uh, Nicole, Christina, is he needs more hours in the day. 
Oh, so, my goodness. <laughs> he's looking for a place he can move where he can find more hours in the day. That's really funny. Yeah. You know what is, I've heard, too, um, I haven't done this exactly, I guess, in some little ways I have, but people talk about mentoring as a really lovely way to leave a legacy, is passing on what you know to younger generations. Um, and that's something that brings deep satisfaction to the older person. And so I just put that out there. If there's something that you know about, there's something that you can share. People talk about that as being a very rich experience. And I'm sure you've heard of this whole intergenerational relationships being yeah. extremely beneficial for both the younger and the older person. Right. Yeah. That, and it would seem now that there's so many people that need that mentoring with COVID. Mm -hmm. I just feel for all these kids that have, you know, three school years that they've gone through and just the challenges of mm -hmm. parents trying to raise kids that way. That's a, you know, but COVID kind of holds, holds you back because the older people are even more susceptible to getting it. Right. So the yeah. mentoring, I mean, I guess it could be done by zoom and stuff, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. Wow. So, um, what other tips do you have for aging zestfully? Well, what we know from research is that, you know, you can drink all the kale smoothies in the world and do all the exercises and the yoga, but so much of what keeps us healthy is our relationships. Mm. Um, we're mammals and, you know, our whole thing is to be in a, in a pod or a tribe and it's not just inconvenient if we're not in a, a tribe it's really deadly i mean if you think of evolution you got to be part of that group and that's how we're hardwired so that's become very challenging during COVID, obviously and we're seeing a lot of addiction increase a lot of suicide increase just all kinds of grief coming out in different ways so you have to be more creative um, in where you find your people. They don't have to be, um, it doesn't have to be best friend, best friend, best friend, and let me tell you all my dark secrets. It could even be um, like where, you know, I there's a bagel place near me and I always see these retired folks and they just, they're all from all different walks of life, but they meet there, you know, regularly and they're just having the time of their lives you know if you're gonna like have a, a group that walks together or it doesn't matter it doesn't have to be super intense but what it does have to feel like that you belong and i gave this example a long time ago back to dogs you'll have to forgive me but there's a soccer field near my house and people get together and they're all different ages, like they're grad students, there's faculty, there's just regular neighbors, their kids, and they bring their dogs to play. It doesn't always work out as well as, <laughs> as we would hope, but, um, you know, they meet regularly, they know each other, most of the time they know each other's dogs' names more. But, you know, they know that <clears throat> those are, that's a regular thing, they're part of a group. And that's very important for our mental and our physical health. So I guess what I would say is in whatever way you can, and you have to be super creative these days. Um, I actually had a guest who did something really clever. She's a dietitian, and um, she did a soup club. So every, every week she would put out a recipe People would get the ingredients and then all go on Zoom together and make the soup together. So they had a soup club. That's fun. Yeah. Um, and I thought, well, wow, how clever that is. Cause she's teaching, you know, some really nice cooking skills about how to eat well, but people know each other now a little bit and they know what to expect and they know that they're part of the group. So I think that if you really want to look at the research, that is sort of the number one um, goal that you'd want to look at seriously. That's interesting. I, I see, you know, there's a lot of people that are here watching 
Um, there's quite a few live shows that have really popped up during COVID too. And, you know, some of the people here like D Scott Smith, uh, Tim So and Kara, you know, um, Inger, they have live shows too. And so everyone kind of shows up for each other's live show and we've kind of created a community. That's and then, it. And, and that's a fun way. I mean, you know, like I don't feel alone, even though I live alone with my dog, I don't feel alone. Mm -hmm. And another thing is, um, once this one guy, Brian Schulman, uh, came out east, he lives in California, he came out east and he met up with Tim Sowen. And there's a woman that's a friend of theirs too, Nancy Barrows, who lives out in the San Diego area. She couldn't make the trip. So what they did is they just had her on um, on the phone, on um, the webcam, on the phone, the whole time, wherever they went. They took oh. her to lunch. And she was there oh with them. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I have so a knit, knitting group and, you know, we're really different. We have different jobs. We have different lives. But there's something about just sitting all together and knitting and and just kind of talking about stuff that's not even that deep that just feels like a shot of goodness. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. Barbara says that um, she mentors many small business uh, CEOs, especially women and veterans, and it's very rewarding yeah. to watch them succeed. That's yeah. lovely. Thank you yeah. for doing that. And that's leaving a legacy, right? You're helping them, their business succeed and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, when is your tennis trip? Uh, it is in the middle of May. I think it starts the 17th and um, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous because, you know, a lot of it is mental, right? I mean, we all know how to hit the ball. The question is like, <laughs> who's going to stay focused? Um, we'll see what happens. Usually I make some buddies and I... Um, I try to use my sense of humor. I'm also going to bring a, a microphone and uh, see how I can interview some of the folks down there because, you know, you want to find some zestful agers. That's like, you know, the best place to find them. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to um, approach people. I don't want to be uh, kind of bothering them if they're right. trying to get into their sport or whatever. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to approach them and say, hey, I'm also a podcaster. And would you mind answering a few questions and and sort of see what that might look like? I'm also thinking of doing a Facebook Live down there. And I haven't oh, done that in a, for a while. So um, I've got some work ahead of me. Yeah, that's a good idea. I, I, I forgot your story about why you started the podcast four years ago. Like something happened yeah. that made you so... Uh, well, um, I think what happened was, as I said, you know, I was talking to clients who were asking similar questions oh, that I was asking. Yeah. And I thought, okay. you know, I think we're on to something here. And I had I had a tech person helping me because I put some courses online. One was um, Zestful Aging and the other was Mindful Eating. And he said, you know, I think you would really like podcasting because you really like to talk to people and you know, so the next day I went to a friend's house who had done a retreat with me. We organized it together on fly fishing and meditation. And she does a lot of work. She's a guide and she does a lot of work with breast cancer survivors that are uh, post, you know, treatment and really trying to get their lives back. And she takes them on these beautiful streams and teaches them how to fly fish and she's a great talker. So I went over there just with my little laptop, no fancy equipment. I think I I just recorded on GarageBand. I didn't have a mic. And I thought, once she started talking about what it means to her to volunteer and get older and retire and why she wants to be with people who are, I just, it was like I was bitten and I just thought I got to do more of this. And um, that's, that's, that's awesome. how it went, yeah. That's Podcasting is so fun. I've uh, I have learned so much from every single one of the guests that I've interviewed. I just love it, and I look forward to it. And it's exciting. It's and, uh, so awesome. It's funny because when I was writing my book, I was talking about how like if you talk to podcasters, 
They talk about their podcast like they're their children. They're like, let me tell you about everyone adores their own podcast. And it's hard to explain, I guess, unless you do it. But it's like your baby. It's like, this is my thing. And and, and I agree with you. It just brings so much joy and enrichment. I never imagined that, um, you know, it's really life-changing. It really is. It really is. I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm close to, I want to say like 170 or something like that, that episodes. I'm, That's a lot. You know, so, That's yeah, a lot. A and you have to lot. show up. And sometimes, you know, you're like, oh, maybe I'm a little tired tonight or maybe I want to go, whatever. So there is this part of like, you've got to show up and 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 do what you tell your audience you're going to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. So there's that commitment, I think. Yeah, for sure. But I love it. So I just want to say thank you for being on my show and thank you for to everybody who commented and watched, you know, um, I don't know if you have time, Nicole, but what I do is usually the next day or maybe tonight go in and just respond to some of the comments because we mm -hmm. didn't get to cover them all, but, um, sure. you know, and, and then you can uh, connect with some of the, uh, some of the viewers because like D Scott, he wants to interview you. And uh, so make Great. some new friends. Yeah, and please reach out. Uh, you can find me at zestfulaging.com. And if you have ideas about um, guests or, you know, whatever, uh, I'd love to hear from you. I'm really interested in hearing from people who want to know more about the subject. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm going to put you in the green room for, for just Thank a you. Oh, wait, see, there's a few more chats here. Uh, let's see if I missed something. No, yeah, Barbara says, thank you for a night, nice night, nicely done. And uh, Christine says, we are relational animals. Thank you, Emily and Nicole. You have zestfully connected <laughs> with all of our Oh, you're welcome. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you. So I'll put you in the green room for just thank a minute. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I really appreciate you guys showing up and commenting in the comments and i'm actually going live again this week this is my second time this week and uh usually i'm just live on wednesday nights at 7 30. um but i'm going live on friday with uh, mariah eddington i think that's how i, pr I pronounced her name right and Br byron her husband and we're talking about a book that they have coming out about just living joyfully so i hope that you can join us that is at three o'clock eastern on friday uh, that's a special episode. And I wanted to say too that um, there's one more night tonight. You can enroll in my mental fitness coaching program, which is helps you create a life you love living. I think I've talked about that a lot on the show where it just really transformed my life to um, help me to be more in the moment. And that is really something that has helped me create a life I love living. So thank you all for watching. I'm going to play my outro and i'll see you guys hopefully friday if not next wednesday I'll talk to you later onward live is sponsored by emily Harmon coaching and consulting visit my website emilyharmon.com to learn more about me and my coaching programs i'd love to help you create a life you love living remember every adversity is our own personal university Sometimes the lessons are difficult and we must take responsibility for our mistakes. Vulnerability is your superpower. You are lovable and worthy. And we discuss these topics and more because professional is personal. Thank you for joining us and engaging with me and my guest. I look forward to seeing you next time.